Good morning, you guys. Good morning. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive into this word. Um, God has pretty much been showing me this um, story to um, record on for this freedom series for like the last maybe two to three days, maybe four days. Um, and he just woke me up and was giving me more notes to do it. So I want to release it while it's fresh. I was just going to record today and release tomorrow since I said Monday. But I'm going to get this word out today. Some days he does do that with me. Um, he'll have me come on the same day or record and save it and then release it or just record and release it the same day. I do feel in my spirit that someone needs to hear this today. So even if it's for one person, I'm going to um, be obedient and release it. So we're going to come from Luke chapter 5 verses 17 through 26. We have come from this before, but mostly just like reading it. I'm not really going in depth. We do have a Luke series. Um, we may have a couple videos talking about this, but not um, with these notes that God has given me for this freedom series. So um, freedom, you know, um, is liberty, liberation, not being um, tied down or oppressed or bound. Freedom is really being free. You know, we know that in Christ, he wants us to be free. So um, I'm going to read first and then I'm going to just give you guys the notes that he was saying for um, this video. So like I said, Luke chapter 5 verses 17 through 26. You can read it in fuller context because it talks about a lot of other things. Like it talks about um, the calling of the first disciples, the man with leprosy, Jesus heals a paralytic, which that's what we're going to read right now, the calling of Levi. Jesus question about fasting but we're just going to hone in on this Jesus heals a paralytic so I'm going to read it to you guys and then we're going to get into the notes and like our title says freedom be healed be free be forgiven because that's very important God wants to see us healed he wants to see you healed he wanted to see this man healed he wants to see us free he wanted to see this man free and he wants to see us forgiven and what I love about God is that he doesn't just want to see it. He actually um, moves into it. He can back it up. He not only want to see us healed, he heals us. He not only want to see us be free, he sets us free, right? He not only want to see, oh, I want to see you forgiven, he forgives. So you see like um, how the Bible talks about faith without works is dead. That was related to us. And we talked about that in the book of James and gave practical and spiritual examples and what the word says. But I love that about Jesus. He don't just talk. He walk his walk. You know, he did it when he was here on this earth and he's doing it here even now, you know, through Holy Spirit. So it's important for us to remember this as we're reading this and some of you are revisiting this but it's important to know that God loves you so much he wants you healed completely he wants you free completely and he wants you forgiven completely so let's read one day as he was teaching this is verse 17 I'll read it verse by verse for this one Luke 5 17 one day as he was teaching talking about Jesus Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there and the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Jesus, everything was already set up with these people being in place. A lot of these religious people, not all of them, but a lot of them uh, opposed him. They were so into the law of Moses and religion that they missed who God was right before their very eyes. They were so into the box um, that they couldn't get what, what was out of the box for them. They were so into their own self-righteousness. So this day and time of events is set up the way it is for a reason. These people being here are here for a reason. This man coming on this day is for a reason. You even hearing this message today is for a reason. You hearing what God is speaking to you directly through your relationship with him or through other ministries or people who God have you connected to is for a reason. So let's go back to this. One day as he was teaching... Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. Somebody say, we're sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Verse 18, some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat. So that means this man cannot walk. He cannot 
he doesn't he's not he don't have no mobility on his own right some men came carrying a paralytic on the mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before jesus basically so jesus could heal him verse 19 when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd they went up on the roof and lowered him onto his mat on his mat threw the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of jesus that's some faith because a roof is supposed to cover us from you know the, the heat the storm the winds the rays it's supposed to cover us and it's supposed to hold like the top of our homes together right as we have a foundation at the bottom the roof is like our um covering on the top so these men were persistent they like we can't get them through the dough we can't get them in no other way we finna make a way so they 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 went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of jesus somebody say divine timing and literally divine alignment right in front of jesus you know okay so 20 when jesus saw their faith it don't even say he saw the man faith it don't mean the man ain't have faith but the lord say he when it, the bible say when jesus saw their faith and we know that hebrews 11 and 12 and other scriptures that we have on faith in videos talks about how god is so moved and well pleased with faith we can't please him without faith the bible also talks about in corinthians there is faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love so i like that these people had not just faith for this man to be um healed but they had to have some type of love in their heart for him because I, I i couldn't see them carrying around somebody and wanting them to be healed if they hated them or if they hated him or had ill in their heart against him so this goes to show a heart posture of these men carrying him, his friends carrying him in their faith. Because here's 20. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. It blows me away because as I read this story over the years, you know, you could read something so many times and God will show you different revelations about it. That's why I don't limit him. That's why I like to be like a baby and learn and relearn. I don't know nothing. I like that mindset. I don't know nothing. You know, I know what I know, but I, I don't want to have a mindset. I know everything because I don't. I want to be humble continuously like a little child and I want to learn. You understand? So I love this. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. There are some of you that have prayed for others and have stood in the gap for others and God moved in their life or moving in their life or about to move in their life because of your because of your faith because of your prayers because of your seats because of your intercession because of your crying out because of your time and commitment you know so i'm gonna read this again for somebody because it's stirring up my faith when jesus saw their faith he said friend your sins are forgiven the pharisees here's 21 and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy who can forgive sins but god alone and we have teachings talking about the pharisees and um you know these teachers of the law and just different things about them so let's just keep reading who can forgive sins but god alone 22 jesus knew what they were thinking they didn't even speak this but he knows what's in the heart of a man that's like with um when we did our Samuel series and talk about David and things, when um, the prophet Samuel went to go anoint um, Jesse's sons, and he was thinking it was this one because this one was handsome or this one was, was this, this, or whatever. And the Lord was like, no, I have not, um, you know, I have not um, chosen him. I have not re selected him. I have rejected him. Man looks at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. And it was the one that they didn't think it was. It was um, David, and that's who the oil had flowed for. So um, Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you? And this is not our first time saying this to scripture where he knew what people was thinking and then said it out loud because he knows, you know, he knows the innermost parts of us. Look at Psalms 139. So Jesus knew this is verse 22, what they were thinking. Thank you, Lord. And asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Our heart postures matter to God, guys. You know, I know we have some other videos talking about that, but that's a word for someone in the now. 
our heart postures matter. God wants our hearts to be clean. He wants them to be pure. He daily wants us to be on his altar. And he wants us to be able to let him do a work within our hearts. Okay? These things in your hearts. 23. Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? 24. But that you may know that the Son of Man, he's talking about himself, has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. 25. Immediately. Somebody say immediately. Immediately is like suddenly, like breakthrough, like right now, like a change, direct change right now. Immediately, like a shift immediately, immediately. He stood up in front of them. This man here in front of them took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. 26. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. So do you see that this man's freedom did not just free him? It, it, it untied things for him mentally. It untied things he was going through um, emotionally and spiritually because his because his sins are forgiven. And, you know, when a person's sins are not forgiven, regret can come in, shame can come in, guilt, condemnation, all these tools of the enemy. We have videos talking about how the Lord does not condemn us, but he convicts us. Holy Spirit will convict us. And we did a, some videos some years back talking about how glory to God, how God's spirit, the difference between God's spirit and the devil's spirit what God does and what the enemy does, you know, so this, this, um, freedom for this man did not just, um, touch him. It touched those that saw it and imagine what it did for their faith. Cause 26 says everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. So now let's get into these notes that the Lord, um, wrote me up. I was writing, um, be healed, be free, be forgiven. Someone release it out your own mouth. Say, I choose today to be healed. I choose today to be free. I choose today to be forgiven. And even though we're doing this series focus, focusing solely on freedom this month, this is for your life in Christ. This is for your life, period, moving forward. Okay, so this first point that God said, I'm just going to um, go like say next point like that. This first point says your connections matter. We see that through this story that this man's connections, his friendships, his connections, they mattered. Your connections matter. My connections matter. Our connections matter. Our connections, who we're connected to, it matters. What we're connected to, it matters. Um, this next point, your decisions, they matter. Your decisions matter. My decisions matter. Because it doesn't just impact and affect us as, we, as we've talked about over time, but it impacts the purposes and destinies of our lives and the lives of others, right? You could probably look at a time in your life where what you did not just impacted you, but it impacted others. Or you can look at a time in your life where others' um, decisions impacted not just them, but you too, or your family or whoever. And that could be in a positive or negative way. You know, so decisions and choices and connections, they matter. We have some teachings on that too, so let's keep going. This next point, the Lord said, there are some people that want to see you stuck and bound and keep you stuck and bound, but Jesus wants you to be free and completely free. So there are some people that are comfortable with you being uncomfortable. There are some people that do want to see you stuck and bound. They want to see you limited and immobilized. They don't want to see you grow. This could be emotionally. This could be mentally. This could be in relationships. This could be financially. This could be in your dreams and goals, your job, your business, your career. This could be any area. This could even be you spiritually. This can be a ministry. There are some people that want to see you stuck just like this paralytic man in Luke 5. And then there are some people that want to see you set free and go to the next level. Those are the people you want to be connected to. And for some of you, like God has been saying over time, when he deliver you from certain people and things and places, be delivered. If you got to walk with him alone for a little bit, that's okay. He going to make sure you connected to the right people and he'll bring in the right people along. But you don't want to be carrying and holding no dead weight when he wants to free you and having you be completely with him. For some of you in some seasons of life, you will learn or you have learned or you will learn or you are learning that sometimes now Jesus is all I need. He going to supply on every other area, but he's all I need. I want his way. 
over my own. I want his way over this world's way. You know, it's not comfortable. It's not easy to say, but it's worth it. Okay. Jesus wants you to be free, completely free. This next point, the Lord said, right? What does freedom look like for you? Think about this personally. You don't have to leave it below. You can just think about this and write it. If you want to leave it below, you can. But if you don't, this is for you personally. What does freedom look like for you? I think I asked you guys this like a week ago. He's asking me to ask it again. What does freedom look like for you personally? Total freedom. What would that look like for you? This next point, be open to how God wants to free you, whether it be supernaturally, immediately, progressively, like over a period of time, short, long term, but be open to how he wants to do it. We've talked about um, over time, freedom, but also stages to freedom and deliverance. Some people get it instantly. Some people it's over a period of time because sometimes with some people, it didn't just happen overnight. So sometimes it's not going to be overnight for some people. It may be immediately. For some people, it may be in steps. It's different things that are in place with that. Excuse me, we're going to keep reading, but you want to be open to however God wants to free you. Okay, this next point. Your freedom is valuable. The Lord said that your freedom is valuable. Say, my freedom is valuable. That's just like your peace, your time, your spirit, man, your relationship with God, your destiny, your purpose. It is valuable. The Lord said your freedom is valuable. It's something that is valuable, is of worth, is is of, is worth value, is worthy. You know, it's like a treasure, right? Okay, this next point here, um, the Lord said, receive your freedom today, right now. Receive your freedom. I wrote that for the last point, but I was just flowing. And that's not, that's what's supposed to be the last one I said, but I had, was writing other ones after that, because I was just right in house he was downloaded but i'm gonna say that again in the last point but the lord wants you to receive your freedom today right now okay next the power of the lord is here to heal you so going back to um this where it was talking about verse 17 in the power clause b and the power of the lord was present for him to heal the sick the lord said this here when i wrote he said the power of the lord is here to heal you exclamation mark underline the emphasis on you not just physically so the power of the lord is not just here to heal you physically but emotionally mentally spiritually relationally financially all areas of your life the power of the lord is here to heal you okay this next point here, if you have to pause the video to take notes or listen, you can. But because I don't want this thing to cut off, I'm going to continue going on. Um, your connections matter. Your connections matter. This man's friends didn't see a way, but through their perseverance and like their determination, they made a way. The Lord said, be connected to people and with people that want to see you rise up and rise out. Not only rise up, but rise out. Because some people okay with you rising up, but not rising out. Oh, I don't want you to go further than me. As long as me and you in this same little clique, in this same little situation, it's okay. But I don't want you going further than me. That's not who and what God have for you. God wants you to be connected to people that, even if they are going through, they'll still celebrate you. They'll still applaud you. They'll still cheer you on. They'll still genuinely mean you will. They'll still pray for you and through you and want the best for you. You feel me? They'll prophesy better over your life. We want people that genuinely want better for you. Whether they doing, seem like they're doing better than you. Are y'all on the same level or are they not? The heart postures matter, guys. He's been saying it for a while. But listen here. To be connected to what people that want to see you rise up and rise out. Not just rise up, but rise up and out. And come up out of that thing and go to a deeper level. See, the Lord say people that want to see the best for you, but also in you. Okay, let me keep, um, let's finish this up, guys. This next point, God looks at your faith. He wants to honor your faith. If this is for you, I want you to look up some scriptures on faith. You can check out our playlist on faith for July. That was our theme for the month of July was faith. And we have a lot of videos talking about faith. But look you up some scriptures in the word on faith. What's some things that ignite your faith? What's some ways that God is calling you to have faith? What have been some ways that he's called you to have faith? Or what are some ways that he will call you to have faith? That he's giving you like a sneak peek on. And I want you to read those scriptures on faith. Activate your faith. And also read Hebrews 11. 
to stir up your faith. Okay, so God looks at your faith. He wants to honor your faith. Look how he honored these people's faith in verse 20. Okay, this next point. Don't, don't go back to what God delivered you from. In the scripture real quick that I'm going to give y'all for this is Proverbs 26 verse 11. It says, so we did a Proverbs series, we read it, but it says, As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. Folly is like foolishness. So don't go back to what God delivered you from. Okay, if you fall, get up. You know, his grace is sufficient, get up. But don't take reckless advantage of his grace and mercy. There's so many examples I can give with that, but I believe you guys understand what I'm saying. The Lord said God didn't deliver you from Egypt for you to go back to Egypt. Because whatever he delivered you from, he delivered you out of to be better. He has promised, he has a promised land of better for you. Because even with Moses, he never intended for Moses to go back there to Egypt and stay comfortable and just be there. He intended for Moses to go back there to get his people and to lead them to better, pointing them towards the promised land. Now, Moses wasn't able to lead them into the promised land because of what he did, you know, what when the Lord told him to speak to the rock, he struck it. And the Lord said, you know, you will not lead my people here, you know, but God worked it out and Joshua was able to lead him, you know, so he don't want us recklessly. That's like a person that is a bitch, a habitual, reckless driver. They're habitually getting in accidents. The accident not just going to impact and affect them. It's going to affect the lives of others. They are habitually doing things that they're not supposed to be doing, whatever it is. For that person to say, oh, I'm just going to take advantage because I can take advantage. Eventually, it's going to have a consequence if you purposely doing it in that habitual way. You know, so he don't want us to do that. Yes, his grace and mercy is sufficient. But for you to habitually do it, for me to habitually do it, for anyone to just habitually abuse it. No. Because what does it then what does that say about us? Okay, let's close with these last couple points. God doesn't want you to be religious. We said this over time. He wants you to be in relationship. These religious people here didn't they didn't care to see this man free. They was okay with seeing him stuck and bound. But God is like, I don't want you to be stuck in religion. I didn't die for religion. Say about religion. I want you to be in relationship with me. This Jesus really wanted this man healed and set free and whole. He, he wanted to see him healed and free and forgiven. Okay, this last point, glory to God. Don't forget to give God praise and to keep giving him praise. Don't forget what God has done for you. Don't forget what he's doing for you and don't forget what he will do. And remember to give him praise and keep him first. Amen. So glory to God. You guys be blessed. Have a beautiful day.